This is going to be basically how I strap everything down. We have batteries, we have some aluminum, we have some strapping, got various tools, um, tape measure, marking pen. So we're going to do a row of four batteries in this bank. So the dimensions of, of these batteries here are six and three quarters, but I call it seven because at the bottom it's six and three quarters, but the top it's um, seven. So just making sure. So this should be about 21 inches, but we're going to add a fourth one. So we're actually going to go to 28 inches. So this is a one inch aluminum angle iron. Uh, I get it from either Lowe's or Home Depot. Sometimes I use metal suppliers. The audio isn't too bad. There's jets, trains, planes, all kinds of stuff going uh, right now here in Florida. So basically the way this is going to work is you take two of these rails and you ultimately want to have one rail on each side with some strapping attached, looping across the battery, fed through the battery slots, the strapping slots, and then attached to the aluminum on this side and on the other, something like that. So the way that I strap these is I take my strapping, which has to be, okay, so the battery dimensions. I said they're seven, six and three quarters this way. So from the bottom to the top is nine inches, across the top is 13, and then down the other side is nine. That equals 31 inches. When I gave you the measurement to cut the straps, I didn't allow for any excess for you to fold the ends up. Actually, you need to cut them 34 inches. That'll give you an inch and a half on each end to uh, play with. That way so that you don't have to redo them. Like I did. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> so if we measure out 31 inches, tape measures here but the battery is easier. 31 inches. So and I have to make up four of these. I get the strap from Amazon. There will be a link below in the comments. This might actually work out just right. Don't get that lucky often near the end of a roll. Look at that. There was even spare. So I take the strapping. Uh, the tools needed are I use uh, tin snips to cut all my nylon and my uh, angle iron. I use a ridiculously oversized hole punch. Uh, this is for punching metal, but it works really, really good on nylon. So when I punch the hole, I get, I leave a gap of about, about a half inch in the center. It is folded over. Pop the rivet through, I take and put the, uh, and then remove any excess. Now that is prepped and ready. So now we've got the rivets and everything staged. I don't have any holes or measurements or anything. So the batteries are, for lack of better purposes, seven inches wide. Half of that is three and a half inches. So if I go, Three and a half. Oops, pin. Pin to the mark, and then add seven, which would be ten and a half, seventeen and a half, and then twenty-four and a half. And if I come from the other side, this should be three and a half inches to the first mark, which everything is accurate. So then, now that I have this ready, I use my 316 drill bit, 
which is the size for these specific rivets. Um, the so I use arrow, and this is a three-piece setup on the rivet gun, so that I can fully adjust the uh, uh, how much it pulls on the rivet shank. Shank might not be the right word, but that's the word I'm using today. So, pop my drill bit in here. And then what I do is, I've got my marks. I want to drill a hole on either side of my mark at about halfway. All right there. And then a hole right there for all of them. And then for mounting it to the to the floor surface, I put a hole on either side of where my strapping is going to be so that it gives a firm hold. There's two screws at every single strap. And then I put two holes at the end to uh, start the tensioning. So whenever this, the first one, it'll go down and be flat but then when you do the other side that's when you're going to start doing your tensioning and the uh, those two end screw holes um, they make all the difference in the world for trying to get the, the strap super tight so I'll go ahead and get all these holes drilled them all drilled out and ready. I've got my mounting side here, uh, two holes at each end, and then two, two holes by every strap. And now I need to duplicate this. So I've already got the whole the length marked. I take and I angle, change the angle so it looks more like a U-channel. And now if you can see, I've got my strap marks right here. So I can literally just transfer all the marks over and save time for measure from measuring. All the same patterns will be done. Uh, two holes for the strapping to be riveted to. This one's identical to the other one. And now, I'll take the strapping that's already prepped. So, the question now is do you come in this way and have the excess rivet sticking out on this side, or do you come in this way and have the excess rivet sticking on the bracket side? So when I do the first, when I mount this one, which is the first piece you strap it to, I normally do it this way, so that the, the excess rivet is sticking out this side. And then on the other one, the opposing side, the tensioning side, um, I do it the opposite way. The reason why is because when I do this one, I take and mount this to the floor first, sit on top of this bracket, therefore the screws aren't holding, when I do the tension on this thing, on this uh, setup, the tension is pushing the battery down onto the bracket onto its own screws. So the weight of the battery and the tensioning is keeping that uh, bracket in place. It's not coming back up, especially with the number of screws that are in it. If your rivets don't go in fairly easy, easily, you may need to ream the hole a tiny bit. Don't ream it out a lot. If you ream it out a lot, then your rivet won't grab and you'll have to make a new 
new piece. Two. So you see how that is going to be. Now that we use our rivet gun. Okay, so that is how the final product will look. Get the other three done. I'm, when I do this fold, I'm folding about an inch. And these are in here. I may not be able to tell where those holes are, but I'll go ahead and stick them in there. There's about a half inch gap from the center of each post. Clean off all the excess because um, they fit so tight that if there's any of the um, nylon in the in the um, hole when you're trying to feed the rivet in, it won't go in there properly. And it just becomes very, very aggravating. Those two ended up a little bit close to each other which the nylon does give a little bit, which is okay. All right. Made our first maypole. <laughs> All right. So, the next thing that we would have to do is go mount this in your basement and then bring your um, batteries in and set them all in place. So I'm going to reset up the camera, get everything put in place, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my uh, prep piece. I'm going to leave a space behind this for this specific install. Once you see the, the whole platform that all of this is being mounted on, you'll, you'll understand. There will be six batteries in this bank, but only four would fit on the first row. I'm using Tex, T-E-K-S. This is not the same package, but these are the screws that I use because they have a built-in, pretty much almost like a washer head to them. And these are just sharp point lath screws. So these are not self-tapping. Um, the self-tapping screws don't have quite as, as good of a bite in wood as sharp point last screws do uh, and uh, the specific ones I'm using these are the one inch version So this is in place, I've got I4, you want to make sure that you have all of your straps nice and flat, we one good here, you take your first battery, lift it up into the hole, Just trying to work it so that I can get in here. Do the strapping. Alright, and then continue on with the other batteries. Um, I actually have this large uh, piece coming right down through the middle, so I'm only going to do one of these batteries. I was supposed to cut this and allow space for this to, to be a pass through. In between the batteries so I'm only going to do one of these ba uh, batteries in this example I'm going to turn this a bit grab my other piece which is supposed to go right in here like this right up against it
flush with the end just like that and then this piece I hold it right at the top of it should be almost right exactly at the top of the uh, aluminum I fold it over about an inch and you take your hole punch and put your two hole punch holes in here this is where the fun part begins because a lot of times you don't have a whole lot of space when you're doing installs this way you have to put the batteries where they can fit not necessarily where you have the easiest working space which would be like up front in the uh, generator bay Now this time, the strap has to go on this, on the back side of the angle iron with the rivet loaded this way. Like that, and that. strings okay then these two will get loaded into the angle iron let's see if I can spin it and give myself a little work through now when you feed this in then the strap is fully attached because there are holes here that the um, the strap is going through. So once you attach this, you can't undo it without drip, drilling out the rivets. Get my strapping out of the way and get situated. Slid over. where it belongs. Everything lines up. Now all you gotta do put some screws in right here. So on this side to get the reach I'm still using text but these are the one and the quarter inch. So, remember me saying that the end is for the leverage. So, once I get these last two in here, one. slip a little bit but at the end of on this far side I take another angle iron and I put it down at the base so that it can't slide that way going this way um, it's going against the other batteries and then there's a wall on the left hand side of this uh, installation so the batteries can't go to the left they're not going to go forward or backward because the angle iron on the front side uh, edge and the rear edge and they're not going to go up because that has got them locked into place. And that is how 
eye strap batteries into place. So now I gotta go cut my, this is just for this install, but I did not allow for this to fit between the batteries. I have to cut this and drill two more holes on this side and this side. This will be an individual piece and so will this. And then from here on, on both sides will be attached um, as all in one piece. And then in this installation up here, this, this cable will move um, uh, from here over. There will be two more batteries elevated up here. Uh, with the same strapping, I gotta build a little uh, deck for them to sit on. So, but let me grab the mount here and then I will show you. So I'm just gonna move backwards so that you can see where in the basement this is so this is here's the converter I have it up out of the way it's normally mounted up on this deck right here and then the gray tank and the black tank are right here water heater over on my right the back of the wet bay um, this basement will square off like this and then over here is the back of the steps. This particular model is a 310GK, has a shoe cubby under the steps, which is a, a really easy but very useful mod that um, actually came factory on this one. But um, a lot of people I've seen uh, do this mod to their RV. Two little pockets right there because when you come in your fifth wheel, you go up the door, the steps are right there on your right, and oh, you got somewhere to shove your shoes. And then for this one, down here, there will be two multi-pluses, three MPPTs up in this area. And then the battery bank is over here on this deck. So there'll be four, and then two more, one, two, up above. So this, this system will have um, six batteries, uh, two inverters, three MPPTs totaling 2600 watts of solar or managing 2600 watts of solar. Um, I've already done the LED lighting upgrade, which I'll spin just a little bit this way. So I'm sure that was super bright, sorry. Um, but anyhow, that is the battery strapping and it is very secure. I think my strap, I'm gonna have to redo this strap anyhow, I'm gonna have to cut a new one because when I, uh, pulled that string I think I, I weakened it you don't want it to do that let me just go to this side so you can see it head on you don't want it to do that you want it to be flat like up here so it should come down and just stay flat like that and be, because it did that it had a, a pull a weak spot on one side with the rivet and when I put the tension on it it uh, weakened up so I will uh, be redoing that strap anyhow. So, can't win them all. Not on the first try anyhow, but keep pushing at it. Anyhow. So here you'll see Mike removing the entire aluminum bar, and this is so that he can do the angle iron with one battery to the left of that wire management bundle, and then the other three to the right side of that wire management. Mike is having to drill out the rivets that were holding that frayed piece of strapping in place and he's just going to redo that strap piece um, so that it's good and tight.
So here he is already doing the, the short piece that he has cut off for the one battery that will go on the left side of that wire bundle. Um, so at this point he is putting that battery in place and then when he goes to strap this down, this is where he realizes that the strapping is actually not long enough. Long enough. So as he had said previously, he did 31 inches, but he forgot the one and a half inch that he normally does on each end so that he can do that little loop to, to rivet in. And so this is where he figures out, oh, you know, it's not long enough. So now he's going to be redoing some pieces uh, and make them 34 inches long for each strapping. You may have the same question that I actually had, and I'm, you know, probably his worst critic, and it's not being a mean thing, it's just me wanting to understand, just as you guys are trying to understand it as well. So, of course, my first thing was, okay, did, um, you know, are you afraid that that angle iron right there is going to cut into the wire jackets of that wiring bundle? So, that's what you see him doing is actually cutting it at an angle so that it can't touch the wires and be concerned about that in any way. It's got some pretty good tension on it. If you're like me, you may have questions about this furnace piping. You'll notice in the lower right corner, though, that he's actually already strapped it out of the way so that it doesn't move. And he's done other videos where he shows you how he does that appropriately and, uh, you know, doesn't harm the, the piping. But um, this is so that it doesn't touch the batteries. But then, of course, I was wondering, okay, well, what about this aluminum? You know, is it going to... Could it puncture it in any way? And so he has informed me that it is far enough away from it, and he has also just ensured that, you know, it's not sharp edged so that uh, it, you know, that doesn't happen either. You want to make sure that you not only do your bracketing on the left, right, front, back of the batteries, you want to make sure that you have that top strap as well because let's face it, we're in moving earthquakes you guys, so it's going to bounce up. So you're going to want that extra strapping and you're going to want it to be tight like these are. He actually also includes the, um, the right, the small angles aluminum on the right and left side of this bank so that it, it can't move right to left now that he has that opening for the wiring. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. We are the dry campers, Vian and Mike. We make you feel pampered or solar power you'd like. We'll install lithium and panels up on top. No more worrisome, your electric will stop. What makes us special is that we come to you.